And behind those eyes is a vision because I saw somebody <coughs> on TV. This is Olga Corbett. She was the Russian darling of the 1972 Olympics. And she danced and she twirled and flipped and she did amazing things. Even the announcers said things that have never been done before. And I told my mom, that's what I want to do. And she said, Lisa, you can do anything you want. You just have to work hard and believe in yourself. Done. So this is me at 16, and I'm very serious. I train 30 hours a week. I have blisters on my hands, shin splints, sprained ankles, taping every day, icing every night. And yet, I don't have the Olympics. I win state, regional, and national championships, and I look for college. And I decide I'm going to look ahead. But the thing is, is that I'm tall. As you can see, for a gymnast, they're usually quite short. An elite level gymnast is five feet, five feet one, that's average. And I'm close to five eight. I'm King Kong. I am gigantic. <laughs> and this is a struggle that I had throughout my gymnastics career. But I went to watch a college gymnastics meet, and I saw the University of Utah, and they were different. For one thing, they were women. And the other thing is they had fun. They, in their warm-ups, they played loud rock and roll music. They had headbands on, they sang, they danced, they, they did air guitar on their legs, and they were having a party. And when it came to competing, they kicked ass. <laughs> So I get this the next year, I'm being recruited, and this comes in the mail. Utah's for you. I was like, huh. So they invite me to go on a recruiting trip. I love the school. The coach, Greg Marsden, is fantastic. Everybody seems to respect and admire him. And that year before that I had seen them, they had won a national championship. So they offer me a full scholarship, and I land in Utah. This is my freshman year. I'm the tall one in the middle. And we are a small, young team. Uh, there's usually 10 to 12 women on a team. There's eight of us to start. And uh, we're young. There's no seniors. This is a rebuilding year. There's two juniors, four freshmen, and, or excuse me, four sophomores and two freshmen. And this is what training looked like. We did drills, basics, numbers, repetitions, repetitions. And because they were national champions, actually two times now when I arrived, they had won two, uh, the practices reflected that intensity that was a winning program. <coughs> and so I had to balance it out and have fun. <laughs> you want to have a little bit of a normal college life, and this is my friend Debbie. But the most important thing was gymnastics. And Megan is on the far left and this is Linda on the far right, and they were the juniors and the captains that year, and they huddled us together. This is in the fall. We are doing two-a-days. We are training super hard. Greg would actually have us do sprints up of this uh, diagonal tunnel, and he'd put a, pu a bucket down, and he'd say, if you have to throw up, there it is. <laughs> so it was very serious, and he said, team, team, team is first. And Megan and Linda pulled us together one day, and she, both of them looked at me and the other freshman, Cheryl Milgram, and pointedly said, we've won nationals the last two years, and we're winning every year we're on this team. So you're either with us or you're not. And it was so serious and so intense that I was very scared. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. But at the same time, I was so motivated. I was like, wow, they want to work hard, they want to win, and I want to win too. And they believed in themselves, and they believed in what they were working for. And then Greg would say things like, we're going to be in the best shape, this team, and we're going to be the most consistent. And again, because he said it, we bought in, we believed it. <coughs> and then there was the monitoring. So this is all about the pain and, and even the fear, the doubts that we go through as athletes, and even as people. And the monitoring was random weigh-ins. You never knew when you had to get on a scale, so that was scary. And then you had body fat <coughs> testing. You had bone density testing, urine testing. They even know, knew when we were menstruating, which I thought was supposed to be private. <laughs> so we became acutely aware of our bodies. 
the one thing that we did a lot of, and to me this was the magic and this was the gel, was mental practice. We had a sports psychologist, Dr. Keith Henschen, and every day at the end of practice when we were completely exhausted, he would have us lay down on mats and get very comfortable and he took us through deep, slow breathing exercises. And then we would learn to relax from a tense moment, then you would relax. And you learned how to be very in tune with your body, and then you did visualization. And you imagined every single routine you did. And it took a lot of practice. There's some times where in my mind I was not successful, so it took many, many times to practice visualizing my routines in my head to where I got it down pat. We did well through the season. People have different injuries. It was tough, of course. We're the underdogs. Uh, we're a small team, a young team, and then two weeks before nationals at the regional championships, Sue Stednitz, who was the individual national champion the year before, blows out her knee. She's out for the season. So now we're down to seven. Six are scholarship, one is a walk-on. And we arrive at the day of nationals, and Linda, our co-captain, comes limping in, in a panic. She rolled her ankle, and she says, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. And this is the day of nationals. And Elaine, who was a vault specialist, the last two weeks, she had to pick up Sue's spot on the balance beam, and in two weeks, she had to train and prepare <laughs> to compete at the national championships, and hopefully stay on the balance beam. So all these things, it's almost like our team was crumbling in some ways, but again, this is part of sports, right? So you have to use your mental skills. And we looked at each other and we said, we can do this. Moments before we enter the arena at the national championships, and this is at the University of Utah, a card is delivered to us in the tunnel. And outside the tunnel is 8,000 fans, TV cameras, judges, coaches, parents, you know, it's just, it's a huge arena, and we're trying to hold ourselves together to go and do our best, the defending national champion. And we open the card and we read it. And it says, congratulations, you won. You are the 1983 NCAA national champions. Now go out there and do it again. And we just started screaming and laughing, and we couldn't believe it. And it was almost like a crystal ball just became right there in front of us and told us what we were going to do. And it, it boosted our confidence, and we relaxed. And we went out, and we nailed our routines, and we hit, and we had fun, and we were winning. And by the end, Megan, who was a junior that year and a captain, she won the individual all-around title. Elaine, who's facing her, she won the vault title. And we had three of us on the individual podium, and we were national champions. And it was all because we believed in each other. It was the strength of our team. So after nationals, I went and had knee surgery. I'd been having knee trouble all season was shot up with cortisone to get through it, and <coughs> I rehab for a couple months, and I land back on sophomore year, and what do I arrive with? My back is hurting badly, I can't move for some reason, and the doctor says, you have a broken back. So now I've just come out of knee surgery and rehab the last four months, now I'm in a body cast for two months, and I'm thinking, why am I doing this? <laughs> And then because your body atrophies and you can't work out, then you can't eat very much and it starts messing with your mind a little bit. So again, the struggle of what do I look like? How do I get my body in best shape? And do I even want to do this? But I love competition. <laughs> and our Utah fans were incredible and still are. And that year, the national championships were at UCLA. And when we got there, 300 of our Utah fans showed up. As a team, we bonded, we worked together, we did our mental practice. And of course, being in that body cast earlier in the year, I had lots of time to do all of my imagery. And we did it again. And we were number one in 1984. So this is my sophomore year, and that was two national championships. My junior year, I arrived and my knee's bothering me again. We do have incredible elite talent. We have national team members coming on as freshmen and even Sandy Sabatka here. So we have this drive 
and I'm thinking, okay, okay, I can get through this knee problem. I did have another arthroscopic sur surgery and got through that. And we had incredible talent. This is Cheryl Weatherstone. She was a British national team member and alternate to their Olympic team. And we just were hungry. We were hungry for it. And this is me leaping across the floor. I had an awesome floor team that year. And we were fearless, even with all the hard work. <laughs> and we were a family. And we truly, truly cared about each other and loved each other and supported each other. And this is at the national championships my junior year at the University of Utah. And we had a party. <coughs> and we had eyes on each other. And we were in a bubble. And we never watched anybody else compete. We just watched each other. And we felt the strength and the courage and the thrill of just doing it together, everything that we practiced. And I won the national floor championship title that year. And we won our junior year. And we got to meet President Reagan in the White House. They started to call us the dynasty. My senior year, my body's getting old. <laughs> I've had two knee surgeries, a broken back, and then I arrive, and within a few weeks, my shins are hurting, and it turns out I have fractures in my tibias. But once again, the mental practice, I think I was a little bit disconnected, thinking this is my last year, but my team was so supportive. And we were so in tune with each other. And even when somebody was down, you just respected that. But we really lifted each other up. And this is me doing a layout on the balance beam. And just like you don't see anything else around me, I had to be that narrow and that focused in my performance. And my senior year, Nationals, was in Florida. Sorry, Florida. Nobody thought we would win <laughs> again. And we did it. We were the 1986 national champions. And I learned so many lessons at the University of Utah. And Greg Marsden is such an incredible leader. And I continue to speak and coach athletes and groups today. And if you want to ever contact me, I'd be honored to speak with you. Uh, you can reach me at lisamitchell.com. But what I want to say is that when you give yourself completely and you commit, and then you grow through pain and the fear that you face. You will gain so much with your team or the people around you because you learn what is possible and that you can actually do miraculous things. And the final thing that I wanted to do was share with you a verse that I wrote and it's called, I Believe. I believe in the brain, the mental game, the girl jock, the rally of a great coach, the constant thirst, practice logs, good sports bras. <laughs> that the pureness of performance does not include doping, that Babe Diedrichson is the uber athlete. I believe that there, there should be an NCAA rule requiring coaches to annually improve their communication skills. I believe in the sports psychologist, divine chocolate, managing your injuries courageously and proactively, for that breeds discipline and undeniable strength. And I believe in long, hard, painful, sweaty practices that tear you down and build you back up and surely bring teams together. <laughs>